Welcome to Outside Xbox. It's Friday, which means it's show of the week. I'm Jane. And I'm Andy. This week I've been playing the big new release. Oh, um, next gen GTA 5. No, actually. Uh, Dragon see. Age Inquisition? No. Oh, been... um, last gen Shadow of Mordor. WWE 2K15. Escape Dead Island. Are those all out this week? Yeah. Why? What have you been playing? Far Cry 4 is what I've been playing, Jane, forsaking all other new games this week to wade into the land of Kirat until I'm neck deep in carnivorous wildlife. <sighs> Ow. This is a vast sandboxy nation, as beautiful as it is deadly and as full of civil unrest as it is full of angry bears. Ow. The human conflict is between Kirati freedom fighters and the forces of brutal dictator Pagan Min, a charismatic psycho who came top of the class at the Far Cry School for Charismatic Psychos. I hate when things get out of control. You play AJ Gale, or AJ Gale, son of a Kirati rebel leader returning to the homeland to scatter his mother's ashes when he gets waylaid by Min, who, again, is as stable as a one legged table. It was the fucking golden path. <laughs> And though the protagonist, the villain, and the location are all new, Far Cry 3 veterans will recognise these gameplay loops of driving cars, hunting animals, climbing towers, and wrecking up enemy outposts. The familiarity makes Far Cry 4 feel less fresh, though no less fun. The overlapping systems of human enemies, predatory animals, and open-world physics can still produce surprises. The new mountainous environment, meanwhile, changes the rhythm of traversing the landscape, with grappling, climbing, swinging, and wingsuiting keeping you mobile along the steep slopes of Kirat. You can also now set a waypoint, stick on auto drive, and let Far Cry 4 chauffeur you to your next location. Fingers crossed you don't get ambushed by one of Pagan Min's convoys when you're off making a cup of tea. Where Far Cry 3's co-op campaign was a pared-down standalone experience for two players, Far Cry 4 lets you properly jump into a friend's main game, rideable elephants and all, which is exactly what we wanted. And then there's the chaotic asymmetric multiplayer mode, which lets one side deploy murderous animals and lets the other side be eaten by them, so it's as hilarious as it should be. So yeah, that's what I've been playing, because frankly, I was afraid of the consequences if I didn't. This guy doesn't seem all that sane, if you ask me. Fucking job, you couldn't fucking do that! So according to Andy, there's a new protagonist, a new setting, new antagonist, uh, tons of new animals. Yep, yeah, but it is still very much a Far Cry game. Well, how do you mean? No two main series Far Cry games have ever had the same location or lead character, so it can be tough trying to pin down exactly what makes a great Far Cry game a great Far Cry game. There's the sandboxy combat, of course, but lots of games do that. Here's our stab at a recipe for the ideal Far Cry game using ingredients from previous games in the series. Has to be easier to make than Crab Rangoon. Look, no hard feelings about the Crab Rangoon. I know it's not to everyone's taste, but you'll be pleased to know I had the chef executed for his incompetence. As with most recipes, a great Far Cry game needs the application of heat. Far Cry 2 introduced realistic fire propagation to the series, handed you a flamethrower and allowed you to torch the dry brush of the savannah and anything standing on it. It's also the most satisfying way to complete one of the game's first proper missions. Simply block the convoy on this bridge, torch the wooden supports, then break out the marshmallows. Of course you need to keep an eye on what you've ignited because painting yourself into a fiery corner is absolutely possible. Jason, Jason, what is it? Why aren't you laughing now like you did up there? What is this not fun anymore? Have I failed to entertain you? When we've doomed the planet to ecological cataclysm and we're putting together a time capsule for aliens to discover and ponder the great works of mankind, Far Cry 3's vast Montenegro will definitely have a place reserved in the folder marked bestest video game baddies. He's terrifying, but you can't help but like him because his charisma positively oozes out of the screen thanks to a stellar performance from Michael Mando. There's no way Far Cry 4 wasn't going to have another compelling antagonist, and Pagan Min, the self-obsessed and selfie-obsessed dictator of Kirat, definitely fits the bill. I distinctly remember saying, Stop the bus. Yes, stop the bus. Stop, shoot the bus. We're not sure which ambitious lunatic decided all versions of the first Far Cry, including ones operated by a gamepad like the original Xbox's Far Cry Instinct, should have a built-in map editor. Somehow the habit is stuck, and each main series game since has had a level creator in some form or other.
Our favourite is still the one in Far Cry 2. Its near limitless supply of downloadable multiplayer maps meant no one had the advantage of prior knowledge, because the next round might take place on a cobbled together Eiffel Tower or in a post apocalyptic Times Square. A Far Cry game could arguably take place anywhere, after all we've been to tropical islands, Central Africa and now the subcontinent. But what we really mean when we say anywhere is somewhere exotic and beautiful. For a start, a concrete city isn't nearly flammable enough. If you see him, call me at once! Am I understood? Yes, yes sir! I'm heading out! It's a thread that's been running since the first Far Cry game in 2004, which, in an era still in love with grey corridor shooters, gave you colourful jungle sandboxes filled with foliage and surrounded by crisp blue sea. Basically, if it wasn't for all the murdering bringing down the TripAdvisor score, we'd happily go on vacation to any Far Cry setting. I want to show you Africa as I know it. A land of shadows and light. Barring a few parrots in Far Cry 1, the first inclusion of proper wildlife into the Far Cry series was the safari park's worth of African fauna in Far Cry 2. The thing is, the wildlife in Far Cry 2 was mainly there for decoration and, probably to avoid criticism from PETA, would just sort of fall over if you shot it, which is no fun at all. Those things are vicious. That is progress right there. Now it's time to see what you've been saying in the comments and in Kirati propaganda materials. Mike, you haven't been reading Kirati propaganda, have you? You know how impressionable you are. No, those are just takeaway menus. Glorious, revolutionary takeaway menus that will reign for a thousand years. All right then, first up your comments on last week's show of the week about Assassin's Creed Unity and its historical inaccuracy. Unity's greatest crime against history is probably the wanton proliferation of doorknobs, which I'll have you know weren't invented until 1878, and yet here they are, all over the place in the mansions of Versailles and homesteads of revolutionary Paris. Jai Aronson is with Andy saying, Those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. On the other hand, those who do study history are doomed to suffer through everyone around them misreferencing it. For shame, Ubisoft, upon you and your anachronism. Knobs. The biggest problem for unburnable cow, however, were the voices. Just curious, but couldn't they have give Napoleons more of a French accent? Pain X Killer has an answer to that though, saying, It's neither. The Animus doesn't emulate what actually happened, it's a translated version. There should be no accents, which is why AC1 is kinda in the wrong by having everyone speak with heavy accents. Really? That's the explanation? According to this guy. What about Ezio? He originally sounded like he was from Liverpool. Interesting. While we're on the topic of Assassin's Creed, last week we also played some Assassin's Creed Unity co-op mode as a multi-hued band of professional assassins. <laughs> they, I'm, <laughs> I'm synchronising synchronizing with like a cue, yeah. <laughs> We look like There's traffic lights. Isn't there? Turns out we don't just look like traffic lights. Citroen enthusiast Saxo Rocks says, So we got ketchup, mustard and pickles, the perfect assassin trio of hot dog toppings. While JPan222 says, I see Wario, Mario and Luigi. James Whitehead spins a more melancholy tale, however, saying, La La, Tinky, Winky and Poe seem to have taken Dipsy's death hard. I'm going to knife this guy. All right. That better not have been our target. Nicely knifed. Finally, we got to see Mike and Andy in the chaos that occurs when Far Cry 4 lets them set animals on each other in its multiplayer. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the eagle and the bear have teamed up <laughs> against me. <laughs> <laughs> they've formed an eagle bear duo. They're collaborating to kill me. Vicious Zero can't even deal, saying, There was a bear on the top of a roof at the very end. The hell is going on in this game? It's like the animals can't take humanity anymore. Ah, the majestic roof bears of Kirat. MD Gaming, meanwhile, wishes you two would just quit it with the animal jokes, saying, I can't bear those puns raw. I guess it's just a sign of the times. Because a sign means. Finally, commenter Tabrawler has some advice for you, Mike, and says, Look, Mike, we're all proud of you. You've pursued your dreams as far as you could, and you've shown us all just how determined you are, but it's time to face facts. Your dream of being the world's best zookeeper just isn't going to happen. Bears don't like you, elephants don't like you, hawks don't like you. What's left? Chimpanzees? No, I'm pretty sure they're not my biggest fans either. Well, something to think about. Anyway, I'm off back into the studio. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Look, I, I said I was sorry. That's it from Show of the Week, but do hit like if you enjoy it or if you enjoy pressing buttons on the internet. We'll be back next week, but you can get in touch with us in the meantime on Twitter or Facebook. See you next week. Jane, can I get on the Xbox One? I need to play GTA V. I'm playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, you can have it back in 100 hours. God damn you, November.